I think another piece to consider is you mentioned it in the first episode, like that you'll tell people not to sell their house. Like if they can keep it as like a long-term investment. Ultimately, if that's an option, that's great. You know, we don't want people to have to sell things if they don't need to sell things. But if they're going to retain them, we just want to make sure that they're doing it properly in terms of taxes or maintenance implications and all of those pieces. But I have a lot of clients who will keep things. Like I had clients years ago who owned an apartment building and they decided to keep the apartment building jointly as a business. And it's been very successful for the two of them. And so if we'd gone down that route of like, oh, we just have to sell everything. Sure, maybe they may have reinvested that and it might have been a good investment, but they both had made a good investment in the first place. So if we can avoid offloading stuff as much as possible, I don't know. I don't love the courts process, which is traditionally just chop every single thing you own in half. It's just not realistic. And so if we can be creative and keep as much intact as possible, that's going to be really beneficial, even not on a home basis, but like retirement accounts, some of them have a cost for dividing them. Well, why don't we just avoid the cost and keep them whole if we can just try and prevent as much of the splitting as we can if it's going to be a long-term investment. Because as you talked about, that can be really beneficial for people in terms of their net worth or their goals for the future financially. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with either their upbringing or if there's kids involved and there's generations. And and I, and I think the biggest thing too about when people are going through divorce is a lot of financial stress. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, if someone bought a home 10 years ago um, and with the lower interest rates and, and they almost, you know, they've bought, they paid a lot of the home off, you know, thinking of like restarting that a mortgage, a 30 year mortgage, like it it just, everything just seems daunting. And, and yeah, sometimes just keeping it and living in it makes sense. But then there's a lot of people that say, I can't live here. There's too many, like you mentioned today, like there's too many emotional, like the memories. I just want a fresh start yeah. and I need to make a move. And yeah. uh, so what what weighs more? Like you have to weigh those pros and cons right there. Mm-hmm. But that's really what you should be doing is I always tell clients we're not, we can't just look at tomorrow, next week, next year. You really have to be looking at what are your goals for the future when you're making your decisions now, because your decisions now, not meant to be scary, but are going to impact your finances into the future. And so you really have to think about what do you want to do in terms of your finances long term? And so what decisions are you making now? Because as you said, I mean, divorce is a reaction that tends to be very survival mode. And so people kind of go into survival mode and they're like, well, I just have to hold on to what I have, or I just have to get rid of everything and run. And it's a normal reaction. I really want to highlight that that's something that we see across the board, but that's where we have professionals step in and be able to give options and structure so that then you can know what your opportunities are to move forward rather than feel like you only have one way or the other. It's not black or white. It's a whole skew of colors. So we want to figure out where it's going to work best for you. 